Hello, my name is William Bradford. I was born in Osterfield, New England. In my younger years, I suffered from many ailments which really affected my ability to be able to work on the family farm, like so many of my other peers were. Because of this, I had to search elsewhere for activity and enjoyment. And for this reason, I turned to books. By the time I was eight years old, as a matter of fact, I had already read 160 literary works, as I detailed in my journal. Now, I also had a particular interest in religion. I was a devout separatist at a very young age, but I attended church a little different than most people did. You see, I did it in a person's basement. William Brewster's, that is, a fellow separatist and Mayflower passenger. The reason why I attended church in a man's basement is because it was illegal to be part of my church. In fact, it was illegal to be part of any church other than the state-established church that was the Church of England. Now, because of this, I couldn't exercise my freedom of religion. And again, being a devout separatist, I didn't quite like that. So I, along with about 100 others, decided to go to a place where I could freely attend church and exercise my religion. And that place was Holland. After planning and preparing for several months, even years, to make this journey to Holland, I eventually traveled there and stayed in Holland for two years, where I was married at a very young age and I had a child. Eventually I decided to leave Holland because I didn't quite like the culture there. You see, I still loved England, it was my mother country, and I loved the culture there more than anything else. So I wanted to go to a place where I could still experience the culture that I loved, but intertwine it with the religion that I loved as well. And that's when I decided to make the journey to America. I boarded a ship known as the Speedwell with my wife, but left my son in Holland in the care of my grandmother, as he was just an infant, not able to make the journey. Now the Speedwell wasn't anything from seaworthy, and we actually had to stop back in England in order to board another ship, and this ship was known as the Mayflower. Now the Mayflower was not meant for people, in fact it was actually a cargo ship, and the conditions on it were horrible. The living spaces were cramped. We actually couldn't even throw our feces off the ship at times because the wind was so bad. It stunk, it was cramped, and sickness prevailed. Many people died on that treacherous journey. Nevertheless, we made it to America in the end. But before we got off the boat, we knew that an agreement had to be made so that order could be established. We couldn't have chaos. So we decided, I along with 40 others, to sign a document we now know as the Mayflower Compact. The Mayflower Compact essentially made everyone who signed it agree that they would follow an elected official. I then went with a group of men out to survey the land in order to find a spot that we could make camp. Sadly, tragedy struck at this time and, and my wonderful wife Dorothy Ann fell off the side of the boat and drowned in the freezing cold waters. A few months after that, another one of my dear friends, John Carver, was elected as governor. But just six months after we landed in Plymouth, he died of a heart attack whilst working in the fields. I had lost two friends in just a short amount of time, and at the young age of 19, I was burdened with the task of being the next governor of the people of the Plymouth colony. At the young age of 19, I was tasked with having to lead over a hundred people starting from scratch, the land being barren, having nothing but a few seeds we had planted earlier, and the natural resources that the land gave us. I had quite the task in front of me, but I took it willingly. I knew that we needed a form of government that would keep the people united, and that would support the people and give them what they needed to survive despite their circumstances. Now, This form of government is also known as communism. You see, what I did is I actually took a plot of land and I encircled each of the houses of the settlers around that plot of land. I then encouraged those settlers to work in that plot of land to provide the resources and the food and the animals that they needed in order to survive. Well, the catch was that they got the food even if they didn't put in the work. And because of this, they didn't work. Starvation began to creep into the settlement. After the first two years of the Plymouth Colony, over half of the people 
that had originally sailed over on the Mayflower had already died of starvation. It was a very desperate time. In fact, it was so desperate that settlers began to go to neighboring Indian tribes and indenture themselves as servants just for some food. I knew that we needed to do something. And so, in the winter of 1623, I decided to take out a small hunting party and to go hunt for food to get us through this winter, else we perish in the wilderness. During that hunt, I met an Indian. His name was Squanto. Now, Squanto surprised each and every member of that hunt party because as he walked into our midst, he greeted us in English. I was very confused because none of the natives of this land had previously spoken to us in English at all. Eventually, I found out that Squanto had actually been kidnapped by settlers who had come previously and had lived in England for 10 years before we had come. He eventually was brought back and he integrated himself into the local tribes at that time. Esquanto took us to his tribal leader, Chief Massasoit, and it was there that he acted as a sort of translator so that Chief Massasoit and I could communicate. It was there that we made an agreement and that we received the supplies that we needed in order to survive. The next fall, we celebrated with a great feast, and that feast is now known as the First Thanksgiving. After that year, I knew that we needed a new form of government in order to ensure that the people could actually be incentivized to work and provide for themselves. Because of this, I privatized property. You see, previous to this, all the land that the settlers had and the plot of land where all the resources were grown had been owned publicly by the government. Instead, I gave each and every colonist their own plot of land. But they were supposed to build their own home, they had to make their own food, they had to care for their own livestock, and they were responsible for providing for themselves the means of survival. And because of this, they were incentivized to work. They now went willingly to the field, leaving their sweat there with them, getting the things that they needed in order to survive the treacherous winters to come. After those two years, the Plymouth Colony never experienced starvation again. Because of my successes, I actually was re-elected 37 times as governor of the Plymouth Colony. 